time. Uh, so we welcome all of you here. W- welcome for those of you that are watching. We're glad again that you're taking this time out to grow in the Word with us today. So for our finances, uh, what we want to title this or what I want to title it today is No Insignificant Gift. No Insignificant Gift. So we uh, at Faith Family, we don't take our offering the way we used to, where we uh, you know, go over scriptures and, and pass the receptacles through the aisles and things like that. If you want to give, you can use the receptacle that's in the corner by the door. You can do your giving online. Uh, but we still talk about our prosperity and our position with our finances concerning the Lord because there are a lot of things that the Word of God tells us that we're supposed to do. And again, as we or I have repeated, uh, if we're not in position financially where God needs us to be, then he's not able to use us the same way that he would be able to use us if we had our finances in order, right? So if we were uh, in debt and broke and having to work 80 hours a week and things like that just to pay our bills and uh, to, to pay on our bills, if you know what I mean, then we wouldn't be able to be that financial blessing that God needs us to be when we see someone on the street or there's some project that, that is on our heart that we want to give toward. If we don't have the finances, we can't give. So we want to be able to get ourselves in order so that God can use us however he wants, whenever he wants. So this idea of no insignificant giving came up to me during the week and it really just stayed in my mind. Um, and and the, the gist of it is that we can all be encouraged that in Christ there is no insignificant giving. There's no insignificant gift in Jesus Christ. And anything that God asks you to do, teaches you to do, tells you to do, it will be significant. So there is no insignificance in the body of Christ. So we're talking particularly about finances and giving, but you can spread that thought all throughout your Christian life. There's nothing insignificant that God is going to teach you to do, that he's going to call you to do, that he's going to want you to do. In our own minds, in our, in our lives, we see significance here and significance there. We see the person that's up here on a microphone as more significant than the person that's out in the parking lot leading cars where to park. And we don't even have anybody leading the cars where to park. But if we did, some of us in our minds would say, well, that person is not as significant as the person that's, that's up on the microphone. But that's not true. In the body of Christ, every position is an important position. And God uses all of us to get done his work. And if any of us are not in the place or position that we're supposed to be in, then that would be a hindrance to the overall mission. And so everything in Christ is significant. Uh, so we can, I want to just reference a few scriptures because I have a whole bunch of scriptures for you later. So I want to reference a few scriptures now in looking at what some might consider insignificant giving, but we're changing our minds to know and realize that it is significant giving. So we just got through doing Christmas and stuff like that. So in Matthew chapter 2, particularly verse 11, but in Matthew chapter 2, we see the wise men come out of the east. And we know the wise men are the ones who brought unto Jesus the gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now those are kind of significant gifts because gold is gold, and gold is gold now, and gold was gold then. And gold is gold, gold has been gold like all the way throughout. So gold is significant, but think about the wise men. We don't know any of the wise men's name. We don't know exactly where they came from. We don't know the amount that they gave when they gave these gifts to Jesus. We never hear about the wise men again. We don't know anything about their families. We don't know if they received salvation when Jesus uh, went to the cross. We don't know anything else about them. So they might seem insignificant because they have such a small role to play, uh, as, as far as their, their name ID in the Bible, but they gave Jesus gifts that prepared him for his whole life. They gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And so those were uh, supposed to be from the time that he received it up until his death, burial, and resurrection. Those gifts. And so the gifts were greatly significant, but there are some ways that you can look at that and say, well, those people might be insignificant. But no, God used them to prepare Jesus and to get him what he needed. We can also skip over to Luke chapter 7, starting in verse 37, but 
if you point to verse 47, it says, Wherefore I say unto you, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. This is the story of the woman who came to Jesus when he was eating at someone's house, and she had the alabaster box, the expensive box with the really expensive perfume. That was expensive, but she was kind of broke, and she was known as a, a woman of the city. And she came and she broke this box, and all, essentially all she did was wash the feet of Jesus. I don't know if any of y'all have ever done like a foot washing service or been a part of foot washing. Uh, I went to a, a, a Christian school in high school, and so like every year we had this foot washing, and it was like weird at the time. But now, you know, I see the significance of it more. But so technically all she did was come into this place that she wasn't invited to, waste this really expensive perfume, and, you know, wash Jesus' feet. But what Jesus said here is that her sins were forgiven because of this offering that she laid before him. And then it said her sins were many. And it said that she loved much. So it could seem insignificant that she came into this dinner that she wasn't invited to, and then she did this weird, awkward thing in the middle in front of everybody where she washed the feet of Jesus and she was wiping it with her hair. But that meant so much to her. And it, and it came from a place inside her that was so significant that Jesus saw and recognized it. And when other people were sitting there like, well, what is she doing? And, and, and you know, why is she wasting that? They, he said, no, this is a very important, significant thing. It's so significant that her sins are forgiven. And then Jesus went on to use this story to illustrate um, how people typically are thankful to God when they feel like they've been forgiven much. But they're not very thankful to God when they feel like they haven't been forgiven much. And so that was a very important story. And you should look at it later. But we don't have time. So we'll go over also to Matthew chapter 14. Another insignificant gift was a particular time where Jesus was talking and teaching people all day. And they got hungry. And he didn't want to send them away. And so this is when he fed thousands of people. It's a big deal to feed thousands of people. It's a big deal. Going back to like wedding planning and just other events, it's a big deal to feed people. Yeah. And we have seven people in our family, and like that's a big deal three times a day. So anyway, he's going to feed thousands of people. Well, where did the thousands of people of worth of food come from? It came from a little boy's lunch. They went through the crowd, and, and they were supposed to find some stuff, and they were like, well, all we have is this little dude over here. He has five, five loaves and two fish. And then they say, well, but what is that among so many? And so it seems like that could be insignificant because it was a boy's lunch. But when you put it in the hands of God, it was multiplied to feed thousands upon thousands. And then they had leftovers. And so while it may seem insignificant to the little boy, it may seem insignificant to the disciple that found the little boy that had the food. It might be insignificant to us that read the story. Like we might say, well, his gift was insignificant. But what was really significant was what Jesus did. What Jesus did was great. You know, he multiplied it. He made fish sandwiches for days, you know, when there were no sandwiches. But no, Jesus couldn't done that significant thing without the significant gift that came over here. So we have to be careful what we consider insignificant. We have to be careful when God tells us to smile at a person and tell them to have a nice day. We can't consider that insignificant because we don't know what that's going to mean to that person. We don't know how that can change their lives. Like a little anecdotal story, there was this story about this kid that was in high school. He was going home to... Uh, to commit suicide and this other kid just stopped and talked to him on the way home and he just said hi they had a really small short conversation but the kid that was going to commit suicide changed his mind yeah. he said I don't want to do that anymore and they became friends and some stuff happened with his life later on but a hello might be insignificant to us yeah. when we have all these friends and we have all these people we talk to and all this stuff yeah. but there are some people that a simple hello a how are you, and I love you, God loves you, it could be hugely significant. So the point is, we don't get to judge 
significance. We don't get to decide what's valuable or invaluable when it comes to the spirit. And when it comes to, you know, you spend your money at the mall or on Amazon or wherever you spend money, that's where you get to assign value. But we cannot assign value to what we don't understand or what we cannot see. The last scripture that I want to look at, and we'll actually look at it, and not just reference it, is in Luke chapter 16. And I just want to look at verse number 10. I'm sure if you've, you know, been to church a few times, you probably heard, read, or seen, have seen this verse before. But it kind of brings it together for us. Again, we have to remember, we don't get to judge significance, especially when God is asking us to do it. When God asks us to do something, we can't say, that's too small for me, Lord. You know, I've been saved 10 years. You know, what's what? You know, I don't I don't do that no more. I'm you know, I'm saved and sanctified. You know, I go to church 35 weeks a year, which is better than those sinners that only go every other week. You know, I'm, I'm not a heathen, Lord. We might think these things about ourselves. But in verse number 10 of Luke, chapter 16, Jesus said, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in much. And so he was using this story to tell us that if we were going, if we're going to be wanting God to bless us with much, we have to be faithful and least. Amen. He said, I'm not going to give you much or more or lots until you are faithful with a little bit. So we can't look at the little bit and say, oh, this is just a little bit. You know, I'll do better when I have more. Bible says, no, you won't. So I can say, no, you won't. And I can say, no, I won't. We might look to, you know, want to win the lottery and want to get this job over there. Man, when I get this raise, you know, I'm going to be a tither. Well, according to the word of God, no, you won't. Because we are considering something insignificant that God is considering significant. And he says that he's not going to bless us. He's not going to put us in that situation because he's, we're not faithful over the little things. That means we're unfaithful. We could be unfaithful with our hellos. We could be unfaithful with our nice smile, which is hard to do behind the mask. But smiles are important. We know we've been taught forever that smiles are contagious. So whatever it is that God is teaching you, leading you, prompting you to do, consider it significant. Just put it in his hands and know that he can take it from five loaves and two fish to thousands of loaves and thousands of fishes in the bad English. So we're just going to 